Okay, we should be uh, live for uh, this edition of the uh, Dave Nordahl Show. Um, yeah, I, uh, I realize I'm doing this on YouTube, but um, fuck it. Um, I kind of wanted to, to do this article, and I was like, ah, should I do it as the whole damn uh, show, if, they, if that's, if I do that, I'd rather, um, uh, I'd rather do this as a, as a thing unlike this, so I'm just gonna do this like this, and then, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll just go from there. All right, uh, this is the, uh, live dashboard, uh, let's see, stream health, uh, blah, 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 stream option, uh, I don't care, um, uh, what the hell am I looking for, um, oh, hell, I guess nothing, um, all right, good, uh, good stream health, uh, why the hell can I, uh, oh, fuck it, Let's just get on with this uh, this damn article here. Um, Thirty five practical steps men can take to support feminism. I posted this on my Twitter yesterday. Okay, and um, I hate to say this, but this is the most sexist thing. And this is me. Actually, this is me saying something. This is the most sexist thing feminists have ever wrote this Pamela Clark bitch. It's uh, sad that it really hasn't gotten the traction that it deserves. Uh, and it's sad that it hasn't gotten the mocking that it deserves. There's probably another article and probably another episode of the Dave Nordahl show that I'm going to be going through. And that's 20 tools for men to further feminist revolution. Yes, because as we all know, Feminists can't get anything done without men. But that's one of the sad truths that I that I tried to tell Willie Bumblebee, and that is, you know, if women quit working, the world will keep moving along. Sure, there might be a hiccup in child uh, care industries. Daycare might be a little more harder to come by. But then again, most of these women are married, so we'll go back to the 50s of the women staying home and raising the family, idyllically what people argue was the best time in America. So take that for what it's worth. But if men stop working, like literally, if, if every man in this country, like if we really wanted to shut feminists up for good, all men would have to do would be basically come together and everybody take two weeks of vacation all at the same time. After that two weeks, every single frickin' fucking strong, independent woman that doesn't need a man will become crawling on her hands and knees, begging for forgiveness with blowjobs and stakes. Anyway, um, basically, uh, his comments pro prompted me to create a list of more practical tools. Most men, particularly men who benefit from multiple forms of structural privilege, love to know what they are can do many things in their daily lives to contribute to a culture of gender inequality. Even men who support feminism in theory can be not great at applying feminism in their everyday practices. So let's get through her little stupid list. Um, do 50% or more of the housework. You need to do your share of the housework all the time, of your own accord, without procrastinating, without being asked. Okay, so we work more hours. Generally, the chores that we do on the around the house are more physically demanding, and you want us to do more. Is this maybe why you're a cat lady? Do 50% or more of the emotional support in your intimate relationship and friendships. No, women are more empathetic. Women are better at doing this type of shit. Consume cultural products produced by women. 
In whatever you, I'm going to read what she wrote. In whatever your interests are, French cinema, astrophysics, baseball, bird watching, ensure that women's voices and women's cultural products are represented in what you're consuming. If you're not, make an effort to seek them out. Let's deal with what she gave. Okay, astrophysics is a scientific field of study. There's nothing to produce. I don't I didn't know astrophysics was produced by a lab in Chile. Baseball? Women don't play baseball. And if they do, they suck at it. Bird watching? What am I supposed to buy binoculars produced by women? As for French cinema, look, I'm sorry, French cinema sucks. Chinese cinema, awesome. French cinema sucks, and America's the best of them all. Give women space. Many women walk around, especially at night or while alone. Well, you could do this thing called get a guy, and then you won't have to have that problem. Feeling on edge and unsafe. Well, that's because of feminist cunts like you that say that a rapist is around every corner. Being in close physical proximity to an unknown man can exacerbate this feeling, recognizing that this is not an unreasonable fear for women to have. Yes, it is. The odds of you getting raped by a stranger are astronomically high. Like most everything else, like your kids being kidnapped, your kids being molested, and men or women being raped, it's usually a person you know. Uh, anyway, uh, given us how many of us experienced harassment, yeah, you blow it out of, yeah, having some guy wolf whistle at you from across the street ain't harassment. It's a compliment. Give it up. Uh, recognize that it doesn't matter if you're the kind of man who a woman has any actual reason to fear because women on the street doesn't have any way of knowing that this is you or not. If a seat is available on a public transit next to a man, take the seat rather than the one next to a woman. No. If you're wa- I'll take whatever goddamn seat I want. If you're walking outside in the dark, close to a woman walking alone, cross the street so she doesn't have to worry about someone following her. No. Why should I walk across the damn street because of some paranoid feminist bitch that should be home if she feels unsafe at night? If a woman is standing alone on a subway platform, stand some distance away from her. No. But in so- I-, I love this. Be a feminist bitch, but also be our white knight. But insert yourself into spaces where you can use your maleness to interrupt sexism. Yeah, any male feminist that inserts himself into an area with real men in it will be laughed out of the space, if not have his ass whipped. Okay, challenge men who make sexist comments and jokes. That's an ass whipping. If you see a female friend in a bar at a party on the subway looking uncomfortable as a man is speaking to her, try to interject in a friendly way that offers her an out if she wants it. Okay, so if she doesn't, well, then fuck her. So basically, be a bitch, but also be a white knight is 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 the point of post five. This has let me just check again. This has how many? Thirty five, and we're at five now. When a woman tells you something is sexist, believe her. No, she's going to have to prove how it's sexist. I'm not just going to randomly believe her if she says French bread is sexist. No, she's going to have to back up her claim. That is the way this works. Educate yourself about sexual consent and make sure there is clear, unambiguous communication of consent in all your sexual relationships. Uh, That should be the job of both parties, but it's pretty fucking clear what is and isn't consensual sex. Non-consensual sex involves a lot of violence, screaming, fighting, and trauma. Consensual sex does not involve that. So we're pretty easy on that. Be responsible. I I love this one. Be responsible for contraception. 
If you're in a relationship where contraception is necessary, offer to use methods that don't have health risks for women. Oh, the poor women. And treat these as preferable options. Okay. Uh, let me just read her shit, and then I'll, I'll counter this sh horse shit. If your partner prefers a particular method, let her be in charge of making that decision without questioning or complaining about it. Don't whine about condom usage and be responsible for buying them and having them available. If that's the message, okay, so it's all the man's fault. Okay, then if the condom breaks or overflows or doesn't work properly, then it's my decision if she keeps the baby or not. Hey, if, if all the responsibility is on me, this is why female birth control is a lot more effective. I, as a male, have 8 billion sperm, okay? A woman has one fucking egg, maybe two. Pretty easy to, to, to deal with that versus the 8 billion sperm. Assume financial responsibility for any cost related to contraception. So not only do I have to buy condoms, I have to buy her birth control. Women earn less than men. No, they don't. That is a lie. You also have to assume all physical risk of pregnancy. An instance where contrac... Oh, my God. Really? No. That's the woman's job because all the decisions, all the rights are all in the women's camp. Men have no contraception rights. Men have no birth control rights. We can neither deny nor force a woman to get an abortion. So fuck off. Uh, get the HPV vaccine. If you're a young man, get it. If you have a young son, ensure he gets it. I hope you don't have a young son, you stupid fucking cunt. May you goddamn get the HPV virus. May you get the cancer. And may you die sad and alone sipping a cheap bottle of tequila with your four cats, you stupid cunt. Since women are the ones who are disproportionately affected by the consequences of HPV, yeah, because you have the organ that it affects. Men don't. Your problem. Have progressive name politics. What the fuck is that? If you or your female partner decide that the institution of marriage is something you want to be involved with, be willing to both keep your existing surnames. Oh, yes, because it's so wrong for a woman to want to have her husband's last name so that everyone in the family has the last name. Having a common surname with your spouse is important, too. Be willing to change your surname and treat this as a preferable option to your spouse changing her. So you want the man to change his last name, but not her to change it. No, that's not the way it works. Also, considering you want us to do more of the housework, uh, buy all the contra contraception, yeah, you can take our fucking names. Fuck you. This is why you're going to be a cat lady. This is what feminism is, is basically gone to. Oh, my God. All right. Um, if you have children, be an equal parent. That's been around since the 50s. Fuck off. But typically, no, you can't because men and women are different. Pay attention to challenge informal instances of gender role enforcement. You're at a family function, dinner party. Is it only the women doing the food? Um, well, a lot of women like to cook. Uh, fuck off. Again, men are the ones that have to, you know, mow the lawn, repair this, repair that. We do all the physical things. Be mindful of implicit or explicit gender power differentials in your intimate domestic partnerships with women. Lord knows you won't have that problem with a man, whether a partner or family member or roommates. Um, no. Um, just no. Also, I love how you're bringing up all this, but you don't bring up the gendered uh, indifference or the gender differences when it comes to a divorce court where men are basically fucked, where a woman can basically take a man's kid kids away from him just because she says he happens to maybe get angry sometimes. Make sure of that honesty and respect guide your romantic and sexual relationships with women. Why? 
The way you treat women with whom you're in a relationship is a mirror of your values about women in general. It doesn't work to espouse feminist theory and then treat your partners like trash. Well, all you're basically uh, treating men as in this article are your bitch-like, subordinate, sub or servant, uh, cuckold fuck. So how about a little honesty and respect towards your male partners, you fucking cunt? By the way, at this point, I hope your cunt gets rot, rot, uh, rotted out by necrosis-causing bacteria. Don't be an online bystander in the face of sexism. If you are an adult woman over the age of 18 and you can't handle being called a cunt online, Get the fuck offline. Real simple solution if you can't handle mean remarks online. Get off of it. Be responsible with money in domestic and relationship issues. Know that if you are irresponsible with money, this necessarily impacts your partner. And since women still make less than men overall, no, they don't. In fact, lately, women have been out earning us, so fuck off. This is a feminist issue. Uh, No, it's not. Be responsible for your own health. Men go to the doctor less, off, less often than women for issues troubling them. And when they do, it's at the urging of women in their lives to have a long, healthy, partnered life. Being responsible for your own health, no need any issues, taking them seriously. Since we're dependent on one another, really? All you basically have been doing with men in this entire article is saying that we're subordinate, servant, almost slaves to the whims of our feminist mistresses. Your long-term uh, health is as important as her long-term health. Um, the reason that men don't go to the doctor and the reason women pester us is the whole maternal versus independent instinct. Men have a desire to basically say we're strong enough to overcome anything on our own, and women have an instinct and an innate desire to care for anything that's slightly sick. That's why more women get into veterinarian medicine than men. Don't ogle or make comments about women. Keep your tongue in your mouth and comments to yourself. Even though women may be more prone to wearing more revealing outfits than men, don't ogle them just because you want to and can. A lot of women will look at women who are look great and dress sexy. Um, I don't know the exact number of women who have bisexual tendencies, but I would have to go out on a limb and guess that it's higher than men. However, most women don't give a shit if their guys look at a woman who looks great and is dressed rather attractively and sexually. Now, if they walk up where this woman is, rip her top off and start sucking her tits, that's another matter. But most grown adult women don't give a rat's ass if their guys are looking at another woman. Just as, and to be fair, guys, if your woman is, is ogling another dude at the swimming pool who's in better shape than you and is wearing a fucking Speedo, you can't get all that pissed off at that. You ogle chicks in bikinis, she can ogle dudes in fucking Speedos. Your options are either get over it or get your sorry ass to the gym. Pay attention to the sex experts and key figure presenting information to you in the media. When you're watching an expert on TV, reading articles, notice how often this information will come from men. At the very least, wonder how a female perspective might be different. Well, it really kind of depends. If the article is about prostate cancer, I really don't care what a woman has to say about it because they don't have a dick. And they don't have a prostate. If, on the other hand, and if it's about how I can better make her happy by ramming my dick into her vagina then I really don't care what they have to say about it. Ensure that some of your heroes and role models are women. No. My heroes and role models are my own choosing. And no, they're not going to probably be women because, um, I hate to bring it up, it's easier for me as a man to identify with other men. If it's any consolation, I highly doubt a feminist cunt like yourself who wrote this article, has any heroes that also pee standing up. Praise the virtues and accomplishments of women in your life to others. No, that's just annoying. 
Have integrity with your male friends. Don't be a bro. <sighs> Again, you want this guy to be your white knight, but also be your bitch cuck boy. I've got news for you. If I've got a fight coming up, like in a bar, I want a dude bro next to me. Not Kevin Logan or Steve Shives, who will run away crying to their feminist mistresses the second they get slapped. All right. Um, don't treat your spouses like a nag. If she's nagging, you're probably lagging. No. Half the time when women nag, they're nagging. Or it's something we don't give a shit about. Know that acknowledging your own sexist opinion and stereotypes you hold is not enough. Do something about them. How about your sexist and stereotypical opinions, you stupid twat? Befriend women. I befriend women all the time. Of course, the urge to fuck them is still there most of the time. Find female mentors and leaders. The second I find a worthy female leader, I'll let you know. When in a romantic relationship, be responsible for events and special dates associated with your side of the family. Remember your family members' birthdays, anniversaries, and important uh, events. Don't rely on your... Uh, women are just better at that. Sorry. Uh, but when it comes time to build Little Junior's Playhouse, don't worry. The man will be there to take care of that. Don't police women's appearance. Well, actually, I don't. And again, this isn't a bunch of men saying that woman is dressed too provocatively. That is usually women, usually fat, unattractive, disgusting, hairy feminists like yourself policing other women's appearances. Men generally don't. Offer to accompany female friends if they have to walk home alone at night or in a public space where they are maybe likely to feel unsafe. Sure. But I thought, according to feminists, women should have the right to walk anywhere they want. So am I being the white knight or am I being a sexist pig? Oh, but don't be pushy about the act. Um, You know, there was a I'll give you a, per, a personal story. A friend of mine. She was going to have to walk alone in a parking garage. Now, that is the one place where. I would actually say you do have a chance of being raped. That is the most common occurrence. That is the most common place for a woman to be raped by a complete stranger. I said, look, I'll walk you to your car. She said, no, you don't have to. Your car is, I think I was one or two levels up. And I'm all the way at the end. You'd have to walk all the way back. It's cold. I said, I don't care. I'm walking you. You can, I, you know, I'm walking you. So I did. I got pushy about it, but I felt better. I didn't see anybody, so it was pointless. I would like to point that out. But still, I felt better. Yeah, how about maybe uh, just thinking maybe the guy wants to be the white knight, and, you know, maybe it makes him feel better. Now, if it was a well-lit parking lot standing outside of some restaurant or Target or even Walmart, no, I'm not going to bother with that. But a parking garage, Inject feminism into your daily conversations with other men. Uh, if you do this, you will soon find yourself without any other men to talk to. Uh, I love this. Uh, have conversations with your younger brothers and sons about sexual consent. Um, if you have a halfway normal brother and you've done a halfway decent job with your sons, you won't have to have this conversation. Um... If you have a tendency to behave inappropriately towards women when you are under the influence of drug or alcohol, do not consume drugs or alcohol. What about women who behave completely inappropriately around men when they're under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Do they still get to consume drugs or alcohol? Again, what the fuck do you care how these people act? Because none of these people would you have anything to do with your author of this article and I guarantee you you don't have a man in your life so what the fuck do you care be aware of the physical and emotional space you occupy don't take up more space than you need no I'll take up as much space as I can 
Fuck you. Oh, God, who the hell wrote this? Uh, oh, yes, Pamela Clark. Yeah, Pam, I got news for you. You probably don't have a man in your life. Um, walk the walk about income inequality. Good thing it doesn't exist. Get in the habit of treating your maleness as an unearned privilege that you have to... Oh, my God. <laughs> if anything, dear Pamela, women have way more advantages in this society than men. Way, way fucking more. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let me just check the uh, stream health. All right, good. The viewers are happy. Got six of you watching right now. Of course, I didn't bother to uh, bring this up or play this out. Uh, how long have we been going on this uh, little old live stream? Uh, blah, 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 about 26 minutes. I, I figured this was going to take up the majority of the... Uh, of the uh, podcast today, and I might just do a shorter one, and self-identify as a feminist. And, of course, this was printed with permission from Pamela Clark, Tumblr.com. Oh, simply stunning. I might have to check out her Tumblr later, and I'll probably have another episode to... Um, deal with on that all right let's see uh what else i got down the pipe um oh yes uh where the fuck is it uh where are you you stupid bitch um ah yes Rose McGowan, uh, somebody who has said that she has repeatedly been the victims of sexual harassment and rape and sexual assault, despite the fact she, that she looks like an even creepier version of Sinead O'Connor, who the fuck would want to rape you, bitch, is now saying she is the victim of an Alex Jones-level conspiracy because she has an arrest warrant issued for her on a drug charge. The arrest warrant has been issued for Rose McGowan as a result of a felony drug charge stemming from an incident January 20th. The warrant was issued on February 1st. Now, McGowan became the leading feminist voice on Twitter um, as one of the women who settled a sexual harassment lawsuit with Harvey Weinstein. So she claims that she was sexually harassed but um, she settled the suit. Well, guess what, Rose? If you settle the suit, that means he just got away with it. Ain't that a bitch? Um, and of course, she... Now, keep in mind, the Harvey Weinstein thing didn't break till, what, two weeks ago? Um, so she's saying, are they trying to silence me? There is a warrant out for my arrest in Virginia. What a load of horse shit. Now, look, I think drug arrests are horse shit, but be that as it may, the law is the law. And um, this it, warrant was issued several months ago, several months before the Harvey Weinstein thing. So I really hate to bring this up, but your thought of... Uh, you being a victim of uh, a conspiracy, look, um, you're not quite at Alex Jones's level yet. Okay? You're not quite there yet. Um, again, I would like to point this out. Uh, she settled a sexual harassment suit with Harvey Weinstein. If you took a settlement, then you just gave up your claims. And any sort of victimhood you might have had with me went out the window. Basically, at that point, 
Here, here's what it is. If you're an actress and let's say a director sexually assaults you, but then he decides to give you, let's say, $4 million. And the condition of this is you sign a non-disclosure agreement. And basically, it's hush money. So he won't have criminal charges brought against him and you won't bring it up. Well, guess what? You just became a hooker. Sorry, you took the money. Now, look, I personally think that prostitution should be legal. If a guy wants to pay a woman X amount of dollars and a woman wants to receive X amount of dollars for fucking the dude, blowing him, taking it up the ass, whatever, whatever weird, wild, fucked up, kinky shit they want to do. That's fine. As long as everyone's over 18. And furthermore, if you want to talk about human trafficking or child trafficking, that would cease to exist because they could do it legally. And if they still did the human trafficking bit, then it'd be pretty easy to track because legal prostitution, you wouldn't be worried about. Like it would just make everything so much easier. But um, yeah, you settled the case. You took Harvey's money. So I hate to bring this up, Rose. You just got into the world of prostitution. And there's no shame in that. No shame at all. Um, okay, let's check the uh, live stream health. Boy, I love this uh, new setup. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's uh, try another, uh, try another article here. Yeah, Rose McGowan, I've been silenced for 20 years. 20 bucks says you haven't shut the fuck up for 20 years. Uh, okay, let's do this, um... BuzzFeed quiz. Okay, if I check 33 of 53 on this list, I am not a nice person. I could care less. I never give to charity. Um, I give so infrequently, I'll click it. I never recycle, considering I don't actually go out of my way to recycle. I never answer my phone when my parents call. I do. I never answer my friend call. I do. Sometimes I don't, but it's often enough I can't click it. Uh, I make up excuses if I can't be bothered to see my friends. Yeah, even though the excuse is I can't fucking deal with it. I can't, I can't do it. I rarely tip. I'm a really good tipper because I can never be a waiter. I never do any chores without being asked. Um... God, I never am asked. Uh, ah, fuck it. Oh, I suppose not. Uh, I give up my seat for pregnant people. <sighs> Before I answer this, dear BuzzFeed, there is no such thing as pregnant people. There are only pregnant women. You must have a double X chromosome to become pregnant. Now, I know that the delusional trans people want to think that a man can become pregnant, but no, this particular man has a vagina, fallopian tubes, and a uterus. But I don't give up my seat. I find loose change around the house. I assume it's mine. Yep. I've never returned books I've borrowed. No, I do. I return movies I borrow. You know, uh... I actually usually do forget about it until it's the week of. Well, actually, no, I don't, because you can't. It's it's impossible. You see Father's Day shit everywhere in every store you go into. You see Mother's Day shit everywhere you go to, usually with the date. I usually do forget my friend's birthdays, though. Uh, I do keep change if I'm given too much. I lie to get out of events. Usually it's barely a lie. I lie to get out of babysitting. I know I don't have to bring anything to dinner parties I'm invited to, because I am that. I usually have to cook. I do drop litter. Uh, I do pick up my dog shit. I have cheated on an exam. I have called into work sick when I wanted a day off. I have never lied on my tax return because I don't want to deal with an audit. 
Uh, nope, never sponsor my friends, even though I don't have any friends that do this type of shit for charity sporting events. But if they did, I wouldn't sponsor them anyway. I have no idea what a WhatsApp is, so I guess that's odd. I cheated. Yes, I have. Nope. I've lied about receiving an email. I actually ignore. Ah, uh, yep. I spread gossip about my colleagues. No. Uh, nope, generally not. I hate kids, hate people. Uh, no, I don't hate animals. Well, a animals is really subjective. There are some that I hate and some that I love. Love dogs, hate dolphins. So that's a pretty shitty question. Uh, gone to a wedding? Yes, I have. I wasn't particularly close to them, but I got invited. Made friends because I wanted something from them. Um, yeah, I did that once, but the person turned out to be pretty cool. Yep, I've dated someone because I wanted something from them, namely sex. I always pay back money I borrow because that drives me bananas. I do buy eggs that aren't free range. I don't give a shit about ethical shopping, whatever the fuck that is. I am judgment. Jeez, I'm really judgmental. No, not Dave. I do throw away old clothes. I do give compliments. I ask questions. I don't give a shit about eating eth ethically, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, I do pretend not to hear people I don't want to talk to because generally the silent treatment is the last step before get the fuck out of, out of here. I don't give a shit. Um, I bitch about my friends behind their back and I'll bitch right to their faces. I don't ever call my grandparents because all my grandparents are dead. So neat trick calling them. I do thank people when they give me gifts because I'd like to, you know, uh, it's polite. I don't clean the ba my bathroom after using it because the shower just got washed off. I mean, I'll spray some, like, some of that, like, shower sheen shine shit, but I don't actually clean it and dry it off. Uh, generally, I don't, because normally, uh, if they're running for it, it's already fucked. Ah, oh, fuck it, if I can catch it in time, and I don't even know what the hell ghosting is. Show me my results. I'm 32 out of 53. I'm a nasty thing. Uh, I'm a nice person, but just barely. If I'd have clicked one more, I would have been fine. I would have, I would have been, uh, I would have been, uh, I would have been a horrible, horrible human being. Oh, what the fuck else do I want to talk about? Um, how long have we been going here for? 30, about 40 minutes. Um, You know what? I think I'm going to throw this uh, son of a bitch open to a little Q&A. If anybody's got any questions, uh, feel free to, to throw them open. I will have to read the question because this is going to go on the podcast. But I decided to do this particular episode in uh, live streaming format. Um. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to give them. Um, and I will see if we got anything that uh, can be uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I did that on the YouTube channel. Half a million bucks. Um, uh, uh, blah, 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 Um, all right, let's do this.
Uh, having a white nuclear family promotes white supremacy, says New York professor. A uh, City University of New York sociology professor said in a tweet storm last week that the white nuclear family promotes racism. Okay. Jesse Daniels, described as an expert on the internet manifestations of racism, said on her cunny page, what the fuck is that? Oh, boy, she looks like a barrel of fun. Hold up, let me blow this shit up. Doesn't she look like a barrel of fun? Wow. You know, this cunty page, why did you just add the T and called it cunty page? Uh, infuriated social media users after reportedly saying that white families promote racism by default. I'd love to know how that's possible. She began her argument by saying she learned that the white nuclear family is one of the most powerful forces supporting white supremacy. Uh, reproducing white children are part of the problem. They facilitate white supremacy in the country. I hate to bring this up. No, they don't. It's just, well, the white nuclear family is a little more intact than, let's say, the Latino or black family. Because it wasn't during the 80s and the 90s that white families were being told that single motherhood was the greatest goddamn thing since sliced fucking bread. Uh, where am I? Uh, she reportedly tweeted, I mean, if you're a white person who says they're engaged in dismantling white supremacy, but you're forming a white family and reproducing white children that you want the best for, how is that helping and not part of the problem? Um, because racists say they're racist. They come flat out and say they want blacks, Latinos, Asians, everyone who is not white and also not Jewish, not Muslim, not Catholic. Because believe it or not, the KKK has an issue with Catholics. Uh, basically, unless you are a Protestant white person, you, they want you to be a second-class citizen. Uh, she reportedly ended her argument suggesting that white people should confront their racism and stop perpetuating inequality by leaving their homes. By leaving their homes for their children. What? Until white people are ready to confront their own family's racism and participation in systemic white supremacy that doesn't exist... Because, okay, dear professor, if you're going to claim that systemic white supremacy is a thing, you have to provide examples of uh, where, it, where it is. Okay? You, you kind of have to do that. All right. Uh, and again, uh, the floor is open to a little Q&A if uh, people want to uh, ask questions. Um, she added, white people, do you own your own home? Oh, beyond just calling out interpersonal racism, white people who want to be engaged in the work need to ask themselves about the housing wealth, okay? White people, do you own your own home? When you die, where is the wealth in that house going? My family, because I earned it. If it's your children, you're reproducing inequality. No. Black people, if they work and earn this thing called money, have the same opportunity to buy a home as a white person. Okay? There is no bank in this country that goes, well, you're black, fuck you, get out. She locked her account in response to the criticism. Fox News tried to reach out and did not get a response. Big shock that she went into hiding or at least went into uh, went into uh, but uh, I got news for you. Their her email is right here. Uh, yeah, she's apparently pioneering this thing called digital sociology, whatever the fuck that is. Um.
And uh, no, Altrex Ray, you're not wrong. He asked if he's wrong for walking in a parking garage if he has somebody with him. Uh, no, because you're blind. <laughs> but that's a physical disability. So, uh, somebody asked me, um, how was my Halloween? It was fun. Did not get a lot of trick-or-treaters this year because it was colder than a witch's tit in Minnesota. As for women not being feminists, he asked, how are feminism becoming more stupid? Uh, feminism is a dying movement. About 15% of women in America, at least that was the last inkling from a uh, poll that was uh, done. 15% um, of women are feminists, identify as feminists. And uh, that number is rapidly falling. Um the sad fact of the matter is, is that feminism, for all intents and purposes, is dying. It's not a movement about equality anymore. It's a movement about myth and bullshit. Feminism today is way closer in thought and in practice to a cult-like religion than it is... Um, than it is to any sort of real social movement. Um, so, yeah, uh, feminism is getting stupider because it's getting closer and closer to a fanatical cult-like religion. And, yeah, it just, it kind of goes downhill from there. It's in its death throes. Pretty soon it'll be the area, because, again, a lot of women want to have kids. And the generation before this this crop of young ladies waited till they were in their 40s to have kids. So either they had to pay a shit ton to get pregnant or they couldn't get pregnant at all and dealt with miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. Because, let's face it, much past 35 for a woman... You're not really in prime childbirthing years. And that isn't me being a dick. That is, uh, that is actually fact. Um, why do people bitch? Uh, somebody asked, why do people bitch when your Polynesian friend dresses up as Moana? Because SJWs are idiots. I mean, I, I wish I could give you a better explanation than that. SJWs are idiots. Same thing as if a black person votes Republican. They can, it doesn't compute. They're like, a, they're like a fucking robot stuck on a logic loop. And unfortunately, unlike the robot, their head can explode. Uh, yeah, I read the, uh, uh, and they asked, feminists don't want people sitting next to kids on a flight in Australia. That was an older story. Um, yeah, I read it, and it. Yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit. Especially since all I read about in the news is uh, adult women wanting to have their way with young boys. Um, I guess this uh, wraps up this son of a bitch. Uh, but no, I, I want to finish up my feminism thing. Uh, so basically, yeah, you've got a bunch of young women uh, who grew up watching their dad get destroyed. Grew up wanting to have kids and just basically rejecting feminism and getting red pilled and going, you know what? The world is actually pretty good. But their feminist, lesbianic cat lady professors um, can't, uh, can't, uh, well, they, can, they can't get a job anywhere else. I mean, if these academic feminists lose this job, they're they're stuck jocking the sandwich counter at Subway. Okay? They want to be interpretive artists, not sandwich artists. Um, so they need to get at least a few young women in this field. And plus, the more people they have in the field, the more important they actually feel. And uh, I guess uh, finally, uh, somebody asked me, um, fuck, Mary kill, Francesca Ramsey, Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn. Um, mm, 
God. Can I kill all three? All right. Uh, I guess I'll kill Francesca Ramsey. I'll fuck Zoe Quinn, and I'll marry Anita. The reason I'll marry Anita is she's pretty good at raising a bunch of money and not really having uh, to produce anything with the money she raised. I mean, the last thing that she raised a quarter of a million dollars for looked like it cost 20 grand. So net profit to her, $230,000. So, hey, I'd be on easy street if I married Anita. <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose. Kill Francesca, fuck Zoe, and marry Anita. Yeah, but I figure with the money she can scam in our happily married life, I can afford an apartment across town. <laughs> hey, I said I'd marry her. I didn't say I'd live with her. Um, Somebody asked me, how is it cultural appropriation for a Polynesian to dress as Moana when Mo Moana is Polynesian? Look! SJWs are idiots. It's not, I, cultural appropriation doesn't fucking exist. It's not cultural appropriation. It's cultural appreciation. SJWs are idiots. All right, this wraps up uh, this episode of the Dave Nordahl Show. This will be available for download on, the, on Podbean or in iTunes. And uh, hope everyone... Um, has a pleasant day. I'll be on the uh, Dave Norrell YouTube channel in a couple of minutes. And I, uh, well, you're going to have to check out my uh, gaming channel, Games and Beer. At 2 o'clock today, I'm going to be doing a live stream of a new game I bought called Tavern Keeper. It's kind of a tavern simulation style game. Um, so... Yep, uh, that wraps up this episode of the uh, Dave Nordahl Show. Again, don't forget to subscribe to me on podbean.com. Do not forget to subscribe to me on YouTube, both on the Dave Nordahl channel and on Games and Beer. And that wraps up this son of a bitch. <laughs>